This is the Johnny and Friends Ministry Podcast, and I'm Crystal Keating. Each week, we're bringing you real conversation about disability and finding hope through hardship and sharing tangible ways that you can welcome and include people with disabilities in your church and community. If you'd like to download any of the helpful resources that have been mentioned in our conversations, please visit johnnyandfriends.org slash podcast. Liz Babbitt had taught disability ministry for a number of years, but when her grandson was diagnosed with autism, she gained a whole new perspective on the needs and challenges many families can face. As we continue our conversations about autism this month, Liz is sharing about the special support she offers as a grandma and the encouragement she'd give to other grandparents who want to be a blessing to their grandchild with a disability. Joining me on the podcast today is Liz Babbitt, who has served in a vital role with Johnny and Friends New England. She spent more than 10 years connecting with ministry leaders and training churches to evangelize and disciple people impacted by disability. And she's the grandmother to five grandchildren, one of whom was recently diagnosed with autism. Welcome to the podcast, Liz. Hey, Crystal. It's good to be here with you again. Well, Liz, I've loved getting to know you over these past few years of working with you here at Johnny and Friends, and you're the church engagement manager in New England, and I know you work tirelessly to support families impacted by disability, but it's another thing when disability hits home. It's a different story, and I know that's been your story. It's hit you in a personal way. You're the grandmother to a grandson who's been diagnosed on the autism spectrum, So I just wanted to start our conversation by just learning a little bit about your grandson. How old was he when it was discovered that he may have some developmental difficulties? Our five grandchildren, we celebrate them. They're of all different abilities, but the youngest who just turned three in June, so I guess he's about three and a half, was diagnosed with autism in this last year. Mm. Yeah. And so it's pretty recent. It's hit home. And so I guess I could say I've got some skin in the game now. I've worked for Johnny and Friends for a long time. I've had uh, roles as family retreat director and church engagement, met many families affected by disability and could see a lot of things and ways to support them to find hope through hardship. But having a grandson affected by autism has been a front row seat in a different way. And I'm thankful because Mm. the Lord has used that to transform my heart Mm. and deepen my uh, walk with Him as we are on this journey together. Yeah, that's a great perspective. Well, your grandson is three and a half, and I'm wondering how your children responded to the news about their own son's diagnosis. This is your son and daughter-in-law, right? Right, our son and daughter-in-law, and they don't live close to us at all. Okay. They actually have two sets of twins in their family. We call them the two sets of twins, two sets of twins in their family. Oh my goodness. Yes. And we call them the bigs and the littles. And so the bigs are seven okay. and then our granddaughter's five. And then the littles are three and a half and they are the, the littles are just as different as night and day, but all five of them are different. So it's been really great to get to know them as people The conversations you can have with grandchildren, you just never know what they're going to say. Oh, I bet. I bet. (laughs) So you asked me about my children and how they took the news. Right. You know, it was, it's interesting because my husband is a professional speech language pathologist and- I didn't know that. He is, and he specializes in autism. So working for Johnny and Friends in my background and doing family retreat and then doing church engagement and having Doug- we do a lot of presentations together Doug's about your autism. Doug's my husband of 40 years. Yep. Mm. And we could see some things happening developmentally mm. before our son and daughter-in-law did. And we struggled a little bit because being good grandparents means knowing when to keep your mouth shut. And that just means you're watching mm. things, but you want them to be aware. And some of it is knowing that it could just be a, a, de- a delay in their development and not right. necessarily a disability. Right. So we saw that kind of happening, different things happening along the way. And finally, when they started asking questions, 
then it was time to say, okay, I think it would be great if you want to have a conversation with your pediatrician about your son. And Mm -hmm. here are some things that we've observed or a lot of it was just saying to them, what are you seeing that you may be concerned about? And then... So you're prompting them with these questions. We're listening well to hear that what they good. are seeing and at the same time looking for ways to intentionally steer them toward good questions to ask a medical professional so that right. they can get the best advice possible. So for us, it was a time of waiting until we could see that there was something more to find out. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, watching and listening to our son and when he would call and ask questions, then to help him to kind of understand the mm-hmm. autism spectrum a little bit. That was more my husband than me. Mm-hmm. But being able to be part of that process, I think, may have helped them somewhat to ease into a little more of the preparation. They were, of course, shocked. They were sad. Um, they were asking the same questions. Why me? Uh, mm-hmm. Why us? Why did God allow this? Mm-hmm. I think my son's first question to me was, Mom, what's he going to be like as an adult? Mm. What's this going to look like? Mm -hmm. You have to really think about, Lord, just fill my mouth with words that will encourage and affirm. He will look like whatever God has created for him. Mm. He's in the Lord's hands, and he has great purposes for your children, each one of them, including this one. Wow. So... It isn't like it's my first normal response. I almost have to stop my spirit and say to the Lord, just help me to know what to say that would help them to see you in this and at the same time help them to understand that they're not alone in it and that we are going to be able to walk alongside them as best we can long distance because we live in New England and they live in Minnesota. It is quite a distance, and I miss my grandchildren terribly. I bet, and I bet they miss you. And so in the quietness, when you and Doug are alone and you're thinking about, okay, here I am, I work for Johnny and Friends, I understand disability in a way because I've ministered to so many families, but now that it's so personal to you, what are some of the thoughts and responses that you're having? Well, I said before that it's been transformational. And so I would say that everything that I thought I knew in my head about autism went deeper into my heart in a different way and gave me such a greater appreciation of families affected by disability and going to the store with my daughter-in-law and our grandchildren. Now there are five of them with us. You can imagine it's really quite a scene. (laughs) That's, a, that's kind. That's a nice way of saying that. But having watching people's reactions mm-hmm. to not just the youngest with autism, but the others together, mm-hmm. and experiencing that feeling personally instead of just knowing that it happens to families right. affected by disability gives you a very different understanding. So shortly after all of this started to unfold... Mm-hmm. And the Lord revealed things. I felt my heart changed a lot in it. And that's really how he wants to change us is through our heart attitude. And at the same time, help others to understand how to support them. So Mm. when I do my church engagement presentations, when I go into a church and maybe I'm visiting, but I'm also going to speak, I like to stand and take it all in and see the families that are coming in and look around and kind of take it in and see who might need some ministry here today, who might need a word of encouragement. And you see things differently because you can see some of the things that happen in a family affected by a disability, and I see it in a more personal way. So it's been a heart change, even as much as I thought I knew. And at the same time, I sense the Lord just deepening my trust in Him along the way. That's so good. I mean, even as we've heard so many messages by Johnny that what Satan meant to destroy us and to divide us, God can use to encourage and build our hope for heaven and strengthen our faith. And that's what's happening in this difficult season. And, you know, as you're looking at families that you're ministering to, you know how much 
time is spent and attention with medical appointments and going to the doctor and adjusting equipment and therapy and educational meetings. Has your family gone through any of that yet? And if so, what are some of the ways that you're trying to provide support and help as a grandparent, especially because you're far away? What does that look like for you? Well, when we visit, we visit with respite on our minds. We want to have time with each of the grandchildren and have some of those really funny conversations where you don't know what they're going to say, (laughs) but you can't wait because you're sitting there. And they give you such strong impressions and so many of their thoughts. They ask you deep questions and you're just like, oh my goodness, this is cool. (laughs) So we go, but we go with respite on our minds because we want to spend time with the youngest uh, grandson And we want to have eyes on him and and be a support to our son and Mm daughter-in-law and give them time to themselves Mm. and sometimes give them time with the others, with the siblings, Mm. with them as well. So they can plan a date, they can plan something they can do with the other four, and we get to hang out with the youngest. And and he's so fun to hang out with. He's cute. Yeah, (laughs) he's really cute. Little guy. Wow. Well, that sounds like fun. And what a gift you are as grandparents to your son and daughter-in-law. Has your son and daughter-in-law felt like they can open up about some of the challenges that they're facing? I am very happy to tell you that there is a good sense of trust. And we're like any other family. We've probably had our ups and downs, but as we have learned to be parents of an adult child... Thankfully, we're growing up in that ourselves (laughs) and learning that their parenting decisions are made and we support that. Mm. But because of our experience, I think, at Johnny and Friends and Mm. with disabilities, I think our son has always trusted his dad Mm. and his dad's opinion on things. Mm -hmm. And there's been that feeling of I can ask anything and I know that he's Mm. going to tell me the truth. So... What we try to do is be available to listen well and not try to put questions in their mouths necessarily, but just to say to each other what's on his heart that he really wants to know, that we can encourage him and maybe even remind him, we celebrate your son. We celebrate him because, you know, as Johnny says, God will allow what he hates to accomplish what he loves. And so many times I think families and parents and grandparents can appreciate that a child with a disability is a gift and God can use that whole experience for the good of others Mm -hmm. in powerful ways Mm -hmm. in how we stand firm in our faith, Mm -hmm. how we go to prayer for things, Mm -hmm. how we trust Him, and really just helping them to see that There are good medical resources out there and to help them to see the need for early intervention in our case. So once they started to see things themselves, they opened up and asked us some good questions and then we could listen and then help them to shape some questions for the pediatrician. And in the meantime, I started reading a lot more about autism. And I think if grandparents are wondering what can I do, I would say, Learn as much as you can. Find the most credible source and and learn as much as you can. Not generalizing because if you've met one child with autism, you've met one child with autism. Yep. And so it's... Say it again, Liz. (laughs) If you met one child with autism, you've met one child with autism. And it's a lot about getting to know that child and watching where are the things that we can support, what makes him unique. And how can we say to our, our son and his, his wife, this child is a gift mm. to our family and to others? Mm. Because when families affected by disability are in our churches, then the body of Christ is complete. That's right. And they bring a perspective and they bring a strength to churches that the impact can be felt and The Lord Jesus is pleased by that, that they are coming to the table, to the banquet table to find him and to know him personally. And so I think praying for your grandchildren as a grandparent is 
probably our number one resource because we do live far away. So we see them maybe four times a year. Mm. But in between time, we can Skype, we can text. We can, I can text my son and say, I love you. You're doing a great job as a dad. Mm. Or we can say, let's Skype this weekend so we can talk to each of the children and get their perspective on how life is. And, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you really try to make yourself available. Well, we do. And the challenge of that is that being a church engagement manager for Johnny and Friends, I'm on the road a lot. Right. So this is training season and we're... So you're busy. So we're doing trainings weekends and sometimes evenings as well. So what's nice about this is that when you have a family of five children, your life is a little crazy too. <laughs> so sometimes the times to talk are times that we wouldn't expect. Mm. So we try to connect whenever we can. Mm. It's so neat to hear you talk about the ways that you're lending support to your son and daughter-in-law as you're looking up information on autism and reading as much as you can. And if you're anything like me, I could see how all of that information would make me want to kind of maybe push the boundary lines and be sharing things without being asked or giving advice that wasn't solicited and so I'm just wondering how you as a grandmother and other grandparents can establish good boundaries when it comes to supporting families who are going through disability. That didn't come easily for us and initially. We learned and had to learn the hard way. And as I said before, we've kind of grown up in our parenting of an adult child that we have to be very mindful that they are making their own decisions, mm -hmm. that God is helping them with that, mm -hmm. and that we are often invited into conversation. Mm -hmm. And our opinions and our suggestions are sought, but we need to wait until they are sought. We need to wait until we are invited in and try not to be in any way disrespectful of the things that they're doing to parent their own children mm. because they really need us to respect them mm -hmm. in what they're doing. So that does not come easily. But I think that kind of boundary came about in the earlier years of their marriage before they started having their children and just getting to know mm. them as a couple and then learning how to support them. And they lived with us for a while, not recently, but that was enough to really make sure that we understood how to support them and not step on their toes and not try to make life happen for them. The hardest thing for me is that I just really am such an encourager that right. I want to say things and I want to offer support. Absolutely. But I want them to see me as an ally and as mm -hmm. someone that they can trust to be honest with them when I'm invited to be. Mm -hmm. And that's a boundary that I think is important for grandparents to just back off and not try to take things away from the authority of their adult children and keeping in mind that they have raised their children and it's time for them to now raise their children. I do want them to read good resources. So sure. I don't just say go on the internet and try to find something Johnny and Friends has an excellent website with lots of good information on autism even. So mm -hmm. if people are looking for some good information, they should check our website about autism specific. So I think boundaries are very, very important mm -hmm. to healthy families because without them, we probably wouldn't be able to, you know, have that relationship of trust. So, you know, when we think about a grandparent's role and we think about the legacy and the investment that they're giving to not only their children, but to their grandchildren. In what ways do you feel like you set your grandchild up for success as he lives a life with disability, with autism? When you think about his future. It is such a privilege to be his grandmother. I go by Nana. I'm Nana. Nana. My husband, Doug, is Pop. So we're Nana and Pop. And I really believe that if I can leave my grandchildren, each one of them, with a greater appreciation that God has created them uniquely, mm. the way he saw fit, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, mm. 
that their lives have purpose, that we celebrate them. We are blessed beyond measure. If we can treat each of our grandchildren that way and help the siblings to see their brother as the same as them, Mm -hmm. different but not less, Mm. different but not less, if we've honored God and bringing him into conversations, if we have let them see how we are faithful, if we can give them our strength from the word of God, Mm -hmm. then we have left a legacy. And I'm not talking about money, and I'm not talking about everything being perfect. I would much rather have them come to know and love the Lord Jesus, that he can be their forever friend and can be trusted. That would be the legacy you said something that prompted a question in my mind, and that was, in what ways are you communicating to your, quote, typical grandchildren? How do you communicate the importance and the uniqueness of your grandson who has autism? Well, I asked our son and his wife for permission to talk about disability with the siblings. Now, remember, they're seven and five and the, the littles are three, three and a half. So what kind of conversation can you have with a seven-year-old or right. a five-year-old that'll help them to understand that their brother is different but not less? Mm-hmm. But they were okay with us talking about it. So my husband's better at this than I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we did sit down with them the last time we were with them. We had taken them to a water park for the Big's birthday in September, and... We talked with them about their brother and how did they feel about different things that he might be doing. That's good. So you're asking them questions. Mm -hmm. And letting them express the fact that sometimes it's embarrassing Mm. for him to have a meltdown Mm -hmm. when they are out somewhere and giving them an opportunity to understand that this is something that they can be sensitive to and be kind toward him and to treat him um, just with an understanding. And yes, he's going to frustrate them, and they just need to know that they can be a good support to him. And because they're children and little children at that, it's interesting because not all of them are going to be patient and kind, but one of the other three, one of the bigs, one of the big twins, is the kindest little heart I've ever seen. Mm. And so when I watch him and I see him with his brother, with his little brother, I think to myself, wow, he really, God has really created him uniquely Mm. to be that person Mm. of kindness Mm. for his brother. And so we just encourage them to try to understand as best they can what's going on, why it's happening, a little bit about the disability, but not with making it different, but focusing on ability more and Mm. just helping them to see that he's really special, but he's special in great ways. Mm -hmm. But they they really do experience the normal feelings of, you know, embarrassment and sometimes frustration and Mm -hmm. just trying to figure out how to navigate around him sometimes Mm -hmm. because, you know, he needs a lot of time for transitions. He needs sameness. He needs schedule. He needs things that they don't always need or don't want to wait for him if they're Mm -hmm. going off to the park or going somewhere Mm -hmm but helping them to understand how important that is, Mm. to give him time to process what they say. So they're little kids. We know that it's part of life, and as they, you know, continue to live with him and and be his brother, his sister, that that'll come. What a gift that you and your husband are to your grandkids to be able to draw them out without judgment and allow them to talk about some of the hard things as siblings. I think that is so important. And that probably goes a long way, especially when you're ministering to other families where siblings are often the forgotten piece when disability gets so much attention. Well, there is a lot to be said for ministry to siblings. In particular studies, they're sometimes referred to as glass children, which means that they can be seen through or they can be easily shattered, very fragile. And it's not that parents with uh, children affected by disabilities are intentionally not seeing their children, but it's 
the combination of what's required sometimes yeah. for care right. and just the way the family dynamic is that it, it is important that they understand that that's something to really pay attention to. Mm-hmm. So I won't say that we've done that perfectly all the time, but we we know that it's important for them to be able to ask honest questions. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we'll pose to them an honest question as well. How did you think he might have felt when you did this and that? Mm. And I guess it's just trying to figure out by situation by situation, you know, what would be the best way to help them to gain understanding and empathy, compassion, you know. And the fruit of the Spirit that God can work in their hearts, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, all of the things that can come actually through hardship. Well, Liz, this has been so good. As we close our time together, what advice or encouragement would you give for other grandparents that want to be a blessing to their grandchildren with a disability? I would encourage them to, first of all, thank the Lord for his, his help. We serve a God who loves to help and to ask him for that help and to gain more understanding about the autism spectrum or the specific disability. In our case, it's autism, but whatever disability it might be, to gain perspective and to, to learn about it and then to really learn how to listen well. And not try to force things or make it all perfect or try to be a rescuer in any way. None of those things will help their child or their their grandchildren. But to be a prayer support and to be someone that can be trusted, to be consistent Mm. and to be there for them. Well, Liz, it's always a blessing to talk to you. Thank you for being such a good Nana to all five of your grandchildren, especially your grandson with disabilities, thanks for ministering to families who need to be pointed back to the Lord and have the support of community like you and your husband are. You're a blessing. Well, thanks for having this conversation with me. I really appreciate it, and I do hope it blesses others. Wow, Liz is a great example of a grandparent who is impacting her family by offering physical and spiritual support to all of her grandchildren especially her grandson with autism. If you're a grandparent looking for new ways to support your family impacted by disability, we'd love to offer you a free download of the mini book, Help, My Grandchild Has a Disability. Drawing from scripture, discover how you as a grandparent can be a blessing by providing marital and home support to your adult children and your grandchildren. Thank you for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate our podcast with a five-star review. And to get our next episode automatically, please subscribe. I'm Crystal Keating, and this is the Johnny and Friends Ministry Podcast. Mm-hmm.